Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, Ilham Benit. Bonsoir, bonsoir à tous. Bienvenue pour ce nouveau webinaire de la Chambre britannique. Le digital, la transformation digitale des entreprises, l'intelligence artificielle, une nécessité, c'est donc l'intitulé de ce webinaire. C'est vrai qu'ici au Maroc, on compte encore très peu. Je vais vous répondre à votre question, si vous avez plus d'éléments. Parfait, merci beaucoup. Ça fait un dernier peu. De toute façon, on reviendra tout à l'heure, juste après... Euh, Younes Ben Sodamori sur euh, votre vision justement de la digitalisation des entreprises au Maroc et, et comment l'intelligence artificielle peut être aussi une opportunité pour les, les entreprises marocaines. Alors je suis ravi que Younes Ben Sodamori euh, ait accepté euh, de nous euh, euh, accompagner ce soir pour euh, à ce webinaire qui est, qui est assez, euh, assez consistant. Euh, je vois que le drapeau marocain accompagne Younes même aux États-Unis. Ça fait plaisir. D'ailleurs, je sais Younes que. Euh, vous souhaitez revenir au Maroc, vous nous direz pourquoi. Euh, ça fait plaisir de savoir qu'il euh, y a des jeunes Marocains qui euh, euh, vont, faire, euh, vont grandir ailleurs et vont revenir ici et, et ont le cœur euh, au Maroc euh, toute leur vie. Euh, Younes, d'abord peut-être votre regard à vous sur l'intelligence artificielle. Qu'est-ce que c'est l'intelligence artificielle et peut-être euh, quels produits vous ont plus, euh, le plus fasciné au cours de votre parcours à vous So, Younes, yeah. uh, um, we wanted to get your perspective on uh, artificial intelligence. So, first of all, what is AI? Uh, which AI projects or products have fascinated you the most so far? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the question. I hope everyone can hear me. So, before I get started, I will just um, I want to thank the leadership and the organizers for uh, bringing this together and for talking about AI and bringing these new initiatives for Morocco. Um, I prepared a small presentation uh, that I can talk about uh, what AI is and how it could be useful for Morocco and for businesses in Morocco. Uh, so yeah, my name is uh, Younes, as uh, Landry mentioned. And what I usually do, I just teach AI courses here. So AI basically is a new wave of technologies that's going to come just how uh, you know previously we were seeing the internet bubble and before that there was the industrial revolution now there is this new wave of technologies that's uh, coming our way and this is what ai is all about it's about automation it's about not having to do repetitive tasks all the time uh, it's about allowing people to have like meaningful Uh, jobs and to do what they really love rather than just uh, keep doing the same thing again and again and again. So, um, and one thing that I really want to say uh, that I think is very important is that uh, what we should do, we should not try to fight AI and try to keep everything like repressed down, but instead we should ride the wave and uh, embrace the change and learn uh, these new technologies to help develop uh, our countries and the world uh, as a whole. Because, um, you know, like, you don't want to be competing against a machine in the future. So uh, ideally, you want to be programming these machines rather than uh, going ahead and fighting along against these machines. So uh, in a way, like, our current system and what we've been trained to do for the past few years or the past 50 years or 100 years, is our education system and our system as a whole was designed in a way that uh, at the end forces you to compete against these machines but in reality you want to be the one programming these machines and what's very important for us is to be able to put ourselves on the right uh, in the right position on the right side of the battlefield like you don't want to be competing against them so that's what uh, my view of ai is And I prepared a uh, small presentation that I can talk about AI in general and about all these new technologies, uh, really cool ones from uh, computer vision to natural language processing to machine learning. And we can, use, we can see the practical use cases of these technologies, which I think are fascinating and that we should uh, try to adopt as much uh, as we can. So uh, I can go ahead and just uh, show my screen. So. Hopefully everyone uh, can see. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, so here is a quick overview of what I'll be talking about. So first I'm going to talk about AI and the different technologies in the business world. 
and how we can use these different types of technologies to adopt uh, AI. Then I'm going to talk about the loss and creation of jobs and professions. So uh, I don't know if uh, you're all familiar with a McKinsey report uh, that was published, I think, last year, which said that by 2030, uh, there will be about uh, 800 million jobs that exist today that will no longer be available by then. And what I really want to do is I want to talk about the different kinds of jobs that will be there and what should we do to be able to position ourselves in a way to be part of those new jobs. Um, and according to that, uh, to that report, uh, it said that around 30% of uh, jobs in the next nine years will be, autom will be at very high risk of automation. And what do I mean by high risk of automation? I mean that 70% of those jobs uh, could be replaced by uh, existing demonstrated technologies that already exist today. So this is not even incorporating um, all the new technologies that will be developed in the next few years. Anyways, and then I will talk a little bit about AI for businesses in Morocco and how we can use AI to help develop our economy and to create an AI-powered Morocco. And just on a side note, according to that very same report done by McKinsey, uh, AI is about to generate $13 trillion uh, in, uh, in new value. So how does AI work? Just to explain for uh, anyone who wants to know and for the general uh, audience. So this is the ACAT picture. And what ends up happening, you end up sending it to an AI model and it tells you that it is a cat over here. Now, the same thing, all this uh, you know, hype about big data, what ends up usually happening is you end up getting a lot of like information, whether it's images or videos or speech uh, or just normal like inputs. And this is your X. And then you feed it into your AI model. And then that gives you your Y or your prediction. So you have an input and an output that you feed into your model and it gives you a prediction. So there are a lot of uh, use cases uh, in AI. So the first one is computer vision. And I'll talk a little bit about how we can use computer vision in our daily businesses. So this is a picture uh, of a woman at an assembly line. So you can see over here, there's another person right next to her. And there are these chips or whatever products that are being passed by uh, through this assembly line. And what she's doing here, she's either identifying what uh, defects there are per chip or per product, and she is manually removing it from the assembly line. So what we can do in, with AI, instead of having someone manually for hours looking at chips or defects, or you know, it could be even a food product, it could be some nuts or some peanuts that's just burnt. And instead of having someone manually remove it, one at a time, one piece at a time, you can have a type of computer vision system that automatically identifies the uh, defect or the chip that's not working, and it will remove it from the assembly line. So this is huge for industry because it automatically makes it much, much more efficient, uh, much safer. The machine does not get tired. The machines uh, can work at night. Uh, so there, there are all these uh, good advantages that we can uh, have to use computer vision uh, in the business world. The other thing is uh, automation or like self-driving. So actually here in uh, Silicon Valley, sometimes we do see cars driving alone. And this alone, just in the US, for example, there are 7 million bus drivers. So if this again takes um, comes to, to life uh, at full scale, then it'll also help uh, be more efficient. And also these systems are much safer because you know, these, these, uh, autom these um, self-driving cars, like they, they do not get tired, they're not drowsy, they're not sleepy uh, and so forth. And then healthcare. And healthcare is an important thing. Um, that means a lot to me because my brother and my father are both doctors. And this is an image of a radiologist looking at an X-ray. And just a few years ago, uh, one of my friends, um, uh, over here in Stanford AI lab, they developed a chest x-ray that could diagnose um, uh, better than a doctor with much higher accuracy. And I thought that was really cool and interesting. 
and we can use these technologies even in remote places where we have a lack of doctors, for example. The other thing is machine learning in the business world. So previously I know I spoke, previously I spoke about computer vision and how we can use it in the business world. Now I'll talk about machine learning. And the first uh, most lucrative vertical of uh, machine learning is advertisements and marketing. And you know, it's, I know it's not like the most meaningful project, but it is actually the most lucrative thing that people use in AI and just those ads and clicks. So just imagine, for example, you're working for a big company like Google or Facebook or uh, any of these large companies and you have a billion searches. Now, if you're to improve the accuracy of your uh, model, meaning someone is going to click at an ad or not, just by an extra 1%, so 1% of a billion, I think, is around 10 million. Um, so you have 10 million extra clicks just by increasing the accuracy by 1%. Now, if the cost per click on average is $1, so you just increased revenue by $10 million per day. So you can see how this is a multi-billion dollar business and how much value it does bring to businesses and consumer enterprise. And this is something that we can also be using, for example, in Moroccan businesses for advertisements and marketing. The other thing that is very useful is strategy. So many times, like when you're launching a company or a business, there are multiple expansion strategies, multiple marketing strategies, multiple exit strategies, and how do you define which strategy you're going to follow? And in this scenario, you can also use uh, machine learning uh, to identify, for example, which customers uh, you should focus on the top tier customers, the middle tier customers, or the lower tier customers, and at what points and how to attack each category and how much ROI uh, will each category of these customers bring about. And then the last one is security. And security is another very, very important uh, topic and where AI is very useful because as we're gonna digitize more and more, we're going to rely more on these uh, security systems. So these security systems could range from, you know, face verification to fraud detection and so forth. Um, the third type of AI is natural language processing. And this is my favorite type, uh, the one that I enjoy the most. And the first thing is information extraction. So let's say that you're running a Moroccan business and you have a bunch of, of documents um, that have you know, uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, and so forth earnings, and you can use uh, natural language processing to extract information from these documents to Excel files. The other one is customer service. So for example, with the COVID-19 situation, what's happened is many students were calling universities asking about the deadlines, asking about whether the university is open or is closed, uh, when are classes going to be resumed, and so forth. And you know, if you have 10,000 students, 15,000 students, 20,000 students, or customers, or whatever, you cannot physically answer everyone uh, by phone call using humans. So what they resorted to, they resorted to chatbots to answer these uh, students' questions. And this is also an important, uh, this technology of natural language processing and chatbots is also important for education because you can have a personal teacher or a personal assistant with you all the time. Translation is another important um, uh, subject where you can use AI. And the reason why translation is uh, important is imagine right now I'm giving a talk in English and what we can have, we can have someone uh, like an AI bot in real time uh, translating my talk in a hundred different languages in real time. And that's an existing use case of natural language processing, which could be used in businesses uh, to, for expansion strategies and so forth. Uh, now this is where it gets interesting, the loss and creation of new jobs and professions. And what's really interesting is that, you know, when, when I was, young, uh, they asked me, what do, I, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I always said, I want to be a doctor. Now, for the next generation, you cannot ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because who knows what kinds of jobs will be there when they grow up? 
and if even the job they want to be will still be there or not. So uh, this is an interesting uh, topic and I'll talk a little bit about how different jobs are being affected and just to so we can position ourselves in a way to help avoid any problems or to uh, come up with new professions where people can go to. So manufacturing, as I previously said, like having people on the assembly line, uh, that could be automated with AI. Uh, and it generates a lot of uh, efficiency and a lot of profits for businesses. The other thing is agriculture. And I know Morocco is really big uh, on agriculture. And many times when people water or irrigate their plantations or their farms, what ends up happening is they often set a specific time to water the plants or the crops. And it might be you know, 6 p.m. after sunset or in the morning. But in reality, different times of the year and different seasons and different temperatures and different humidity levels all incorporate into the timing of the irrigation or the fertilization system. And we can also have drones that could go into these crops and identify the types of diseases that our farm is suffering from. And they could automatically recommend what kind of medication to do for these uh, crops. The other component is food services. And this is really interesting because there's a uh, restaurant over here in San Francisco uh, that's fully automated with robots. So you just go in, you order, and the robots prepare everything and they give you back your food. And there are like any meals, uh, you can choose whatever meal you want, the robot will prepare it for you. The other thing is shopping. Uh, so I know, yeah, we, we spoke a little bit about how recommender systems and advertisements can help, but there's a new uh, startup actually, where instead of going to change your clothes, uh, you can just look at the mirror and choose which clothes you want to try, and you will see yourself wearing those clothes without having to go and change them. So you can see how AI is also changing shopping. And this will have like huge consequences because no one's going to have to unfold or fold the clothes again. And you can just do it remotely. Transportation and logistics is another very big one. Um, there, there are like a few startups uh, over here in the area. So let's say that you have, for example, a ship that's going to go from New York City to Tangier, which is uh, where I grew up. And the ship usually just takes, you know, a straight line all the way. Uh, but what you can do, you can use AI to identify, you know, different currents, different uh, water temperatures, different friction points to take maybe a certain current and minimize fuel consumption. So that's another practical use case where you can use AI uh, for shipping. Uh, for logistics, that's another um, vertical where AI has a lot of value. And what ends up happening is Basically, uh, you can des design paths based off different inputs for maximal efficiency. Uh, the last uh, vertical is education, which is something that uh, means a lot to me. And, you know, like often growing up, I'm sure everyone uh, same, went through the same thing. You would go to class and the teacher will tell you, do problems two, four, eight, ten. They'll give you just a bunch of problems. You're going to go home and you're going to solve these problems. But in reality, different people have different learning rates. Meaning if I'm fast in math, I can go quickly because the AI will automatically give me problems that I can learn from. And if someone else is slow, uh, then they can go ahead and you know, go at their own pace. And by the end of the day, you can end up having you know, someone who graduated high school at the age of 12, or someone who graduated high school at the age of 30. But the whole point here with personalized education, uh, having like an AI chatbot with you all the time, you can go at your own pace. And that's another key aspect of where AI is going. Uh, so AI for businesses, Morocco. So I think in order for us to start uh, AI in these businesses, the first thing is partnerships with AI experts to build internal AI teams. So you cannot outsource I mean, technically you can outsource, but what I would recommend is building an internal AI team. And the reason for that is because as these AI models will keep getting new data, the predictions will change. And then you're going to have to monitor these models and maybe add other inputs or change a few architectures of these models. So having these internal AI teams is really, really important for Moroccan businesses 
and for businesses in general. Uh, and it, it's good to just be able to monitor what the model is doing at every single time. And if you were to outsource that, it's gonna be a little bit harder. And one other thing is with the COVID situation, what's ended up happening is we ended up having a lot of remote work, meaning that you can be an engineer anywhere in the world and all you need is a computer and a keyboard to work uh, wherever, like wherever and from wherever. That means that what we can do we can prepare, like we can make Morocco an AI powered country and have AI engineers from Morocco work everywhere else in the world. So that's another very big advantage for Morocco. Uh, so just to conclude uh, what I wanna say, and this is very important uh, is, you know, for example, when, when we teach a class here at Stanford, if we put in a little bit more time at first, just to flush out the logistics of the course, the you know grading distributions, uh, the programming assignments, when they're gonna go out, when they're gonna come back, that usually saves us a lot of time down the road. Meaning that if we put in a little more effort just in the beginning, it has you know exponential returns in the long run. So this is just at a micro scale with one course uh, over here. Now with AI, it is the exact same thing. It's the same analogy. If we were to start today and really try to like train people to learn AI and to use AI in our consumer enterprises and to just implement these new technologies in the long run, five, 10 years down the road, we're going to be you know, far, far away from anyone else who started later on. And if we were to wait another five or 10 years before we start adopting AI technologies, we're just going to be left behind in the race. So it is very, very important that we start as soon as possible because I feel like in the long run, there are going to be clear winners and clear losers in the AI race. And ideally what we want, we want to just start as soon as possible. So in the long run, we can you know, have things going on for us without us having to constantly be working against these uh, robots. So this was, um, wait, let me, how do you sound? Um, okay, perfect. Yeah, so this was an overall uh, view of AI and where AI is being used in businesses uh, nowadays. And I really hope that we can uh, start uh, developing AI technologies for Morocco. And happy to answer any other questions. Hello. Peut-être trois, trois autres questions avec vous, Younes. D'abord, peut-être le fait que l'intelligence artificielle, ça peut faire peur aussi. On se pose beaucoup de questions. On pense tout de suite, d'ailleurs, quand on parle intelligence artificielle à des films de science-fiction, comme Minority Report. Quand on entre, d'ailleurs, intelligence artificielle dans un moteur de recherche, c'est souvent des, des robots déshumanisés. C'est un monde du futur qui paraît pas tellement très familier. Euh, est-ce que vous, vous avez peur de l'intelligence artificielle Est-ce qu'on a besoin de réguler cette intelligence artificielle au niveau mondial Est-ce qu'un conseil éthique au niveau de l'ONU, ça devient essentiel selon vous Yes, thank you for the question. I think there are AI is very useful and could be used as a friend. But I think the thing that scares me the most about AI is when we use AI in the military. So military robots are probably the most dangerous uh, thing out there. Uh, because I feel like the wars of tomorrow will be fought by AI experts. Uh, you can have a robot that automatically does face verification in a small drone and then just targets the person. So that's the, the thing that scares me the most. The other thing on uh, regulating AI, I think it's very important for consumer enterprises to carefully use AI. A AI is like a tool, it's like a weapon. You can either use it well, or you can use it to waste people's time. So you can either use it to, for example, on social media to make sure that people stay on Facebook and on Twitter and on LinkedIn and on all these uh, big uh, you know, companies that keep using AI to maximize uh, retention rates. Or you can use it, for example, for education, uh, for businesses to help people have more meaningful you know, lives and better improvements throughout. So I think that, yeah, we should regulate AI and we cannot just use AI wherever we want. Est-ce que l'IA euh, coûte cher euh, 
Euh, est-ce qu'elle nécessite de gros budgets, forcément, de gros investissements pour une entreprise Est-ce que c'est accessible pour des, des petites structures Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. So, uh, AI in general does not cost much. The most expensive thing is just training uh, like people to use AI and how to develop these models and structures. The thing is, like, if some models to train them, sometimes it could cost a lot of money. But in reality, what people do, they just download like a big model and then just you know run it. So I think that uh, for Morocco, for Morocco's purposes, uh, we can. Uh, de definitely just, you know, all, it, all we need is a computer for the people and then they can just go ahead and start learning these AI technologies and developing them in real world businesses uh, rather than, because it, it's not like an industrial company that you're launching that requires, you know, millions of dollars for machinery or, or logistics. All it takes is a computer and just some know-how. Très eh bien, alors Anna Rita qui est avec nous, je pense euh, en traductrice, là n'hésitez pas à intervenir euh, pour euh, traduire les questions pour Younes. Euh, Peut-être une, une question, Younes, sur euh, euh, finalement les nouveaux métiers de l'intelligence artificielle. C'est vrai qu'on euh, ignore encore beaucoup de choses sur ces nouveaux métiers. Euh, il va falloir mettre le paquet, notamment sur, sur la formation, non uh, Yes. So, uh, in terms of jobs and uh, future work in, for AI technologies, I think there's going to be a lot of computer scientists and AI engineers in the future. Because, you know, these robots need maintenance, they need uh, um, people monitoring the data, people deploying new strategies, um, so forth. So I think we're going to need a lot more AI engineers, a lot more, you know, like people who working in 3D printing or people working in, you know, monitoring self-driving cars, uh, people working in new regulations for these self-driving cars like people working in flight control. Uh, there are all these uh, verticals that will keep going. And like, uh, just like, you know, just how in the past we were afraid of machinery or industry is going to take away so many jobs, but it's also created so, so many more new jobs, right? Because we needed people who are experts in machines, people who are good at the assembly line, you know, good pr product, good products managers and so forth. So it's the same thing with AI, sure it's going to take away a lot of jobs, but it's also going to bring about so many new jobs. And what we should do, we should just try to prepare ourselves um, for and our kids in the next generation so that they can be well prepared to take on these new jobs and these new tasks. À quoi peut ressembler euh, l'entreprise de demain avec l'intelligence artificielle selon vous? Yes. Uh, So th there are two, two things in the short run and in the long run. I think in the short run, for example, if you were to look at a self-driving car, at first, the AI does not automatically drive from end to end alone. It started by doing some you know, assisted driving, maybe in the highway, the AI is going to take care of it. And then slowly, the AI gets better and better until it starts going into full automation. So similarly, in the short run, uh, I think we can use AI technologies to assist people. Uh, in medical operations or in healthcare or in education or in manufacturing or in industry or in retail. Uh, so we can use AI as a tool for assistance. And maybe as the AI gets better and better, instead of having a human having to go through all the processes and the labor of that, then the AI will slowly improve and get better with time. But I think we'll always still need humans uh, regardless. Allez-y, allez-y. Uh, I'm sorry. Vous, vous comptez revenir au Maroc, Younes, hein? rassurez-nous. Vous allez revenir au Maroc. Oui, uh, I, I want to come back. I'll come back at some point and uh, help Morocco with AI, at least help with, uh, you know, maybe train a few people and uh, make Morocco an AI-powered uh, country. And... Uh, develop these new tools and new businesses and new projects. Merci Younes, et n'hésitez pas à rester avec nous, on aura des questions euh, du public dans, dans quelques instants. Younes Ben Uh Yeah, thanks for the answer. Uh, I agree with her on use cases, uh, different use cases for AI, It totally makes sense. Um, the, the, the thing with AI and whether companies uh, who are hesitating to uh, jump into AI, Uh, 
there are like different sectors, right? So there is agriculture, for example, there is like tech, there is manufacturing, uh, there is education. But first comes digitization. And uh, also like it depends if you're launching, for example, a website and all your business is already online, then definitely yeah, you can go ahead and start uh, incorporating AI uh, directly. But if you're, you're in manufacturing and you still require to, uh, it requires some time to get some more data, then that's gonna take a little bit uh, longer. So I think for companies that are hesitating like to, to start AI, I think it's gonna take some time to like, the company does not become an AI powered company by the next day, you know? It takes some time, it takes some practice, it takes training people, it takes uh, like accumulating data, you know, it takes an entire mindset to to start building these AI powered companies. Um, so my, my like what I would suggest is, you know, we can start small, start slowly with this, you know, simple uh, model that maybe is not working that well, but with time it's gonna improve and it's gonna keep uh, improving as, as time goes by. So for for Morocco, I think like we can start and you know like we're not gonna be the best. Uh, like after 24 hours, but you know, after a year, after two years, after three years, progress will be gradual, and you know, it, it'll take it'll take some time before our companies really, really become AI powered. And the the earlier we start, so just the progress, the 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 building, the AI capabilities, uh, the faster we're gonna reach to like becoming the best. Because I, I feel like, as as I said previously, that the, the winners are gonna be obvious, like there's only gonna be like very few winners and the rest will be like losing because they, they lost the race and accumulating the data, they lost the race in developing AI talents, they lost the race in, you know, just general AI race. So I, I think we can start, but what does it mean to start, you know? Does it starting mean training people at first and then starting to digitize? Yes. Uh, or does starting mean you're gonna go and bring state of the art uh, and go, try to go from zero to one overnight, then that's probably not gonna work. So I, I'd recommend that we at least start in any way or form that we can, and depending again on the field and the vertical, then that's gonna have different consequences. Merci beaucoup, Younes Ben Soudamouri. Alors on voit que l'intelligence artificielle crée de, de grosses opportunités pour les entreprises. On a vu cela à travers ce, ce webinaire et euh, on voit bien que le facteur humain est quand même essentiel pour réussir cette, euh, cette transformation et pour euh, pouvoir décrocher les opportunités à l'avenir. Merci beaucoup à, à Younes Ben Soudamouri, merci à, à sa femme Dani de nous avoir accompagnés lors de ce webinaire. On espère que euh, ce webinaire vous a permis, euh, bien chers téléspectateurs, euh, d'éclaircir certaines zones d'ombre sur la digitalisation et, et l'intelligence artificielle. Euh, on a vu que nos experts ont tenté de répondre euh, aux questions les plus euh, récurrentes euh, tout en profitant des, des solutions euh, d'inclusion euh, digitale pour les entreprises afin de développer en toute sécurité euh, cet enjeu de digitalisation majeure. On espère que ces solutions, pour la plupart, seront peut-être étendues et appliquées à l'avenir. Merci et encore félicitations euh, à vous deux, Younes Ben Soudamori, sa femme Dami. Un, un grand merci euh, euh, à vous deux qui avez accepté de, de participer et de nous éclairer sur euh, finalement cet enjeu majeur hein, du, du 21e siècle. Euh, sa fin d'année, euh, je rappelle qu'en plus d'être euh, à la tête d'un des, des plus grands projets de transformation digitale euh, euh, chez Inouï, euh, vous avez implanté euh, WinPay hein, qui existe euh, chez six opérateurs mondiaux. On est fiers ici au Maroc forcément. Euh, vous nous avez fait l'amitié avec euh, Inès de répondre présent euh, pour ce webinaire et on espère vous retrouver très prochainement. Merci, à très bientôt. Merci, Merci, à bientôt.